What's going on, Wolfpack? Big food, big pharma, big government. The perfect big trifecta. Let's start with big food, selling us perverted, ultra-processed, fat-laden, sugar-laden, calorie-laden, junk, doing absolutely nothing for us except keeping us fat and making us sick. Big pharma, peddling expensive ad hoc medicines that are candidly just covering up the symptoms. They're not doing anything to address the root cause. And big government, perfectly happy to keep us a docile, silent, quiet, dependent population of sheep instead of healthy, independent, free-thinking individuals. And all the while, the elites preaching full-on coerced conversion of our food supply to organic, non-GMO, B Corps, certified humane, free trade, you name it, carbon neutral, forgot that one, one of my favorites, food production. So what is going on? Well, as in most cases, all you need to do is follow the money. Follow the money. Today, let's just talk about big food. Big food represents 1.3 trillion annually in the United States, 1.3 trillion. And the USDA says that just the food manufacturers, of which we are a part, there's 21,000 of us, it represents 4% of the GDP alone, $700 billion worth of GDP. Food retail, supermarkets, super centers, Costco, you know, club stores, also a significant part of the industry, $800 billion in revenue. And then finally, food service, fast food, sit down, you name it, catering. That is another $800 billion. So altogether, these, this industry represents one-fifth of the nation's GDP. Apparently, we like to eat, don't we, folks? We do. We love to eat. And not only that, but the, but the industry employs 15 million people and is responsible for generating 400 billion in wages and salaries, including my own. Not quite that amount. And don't forget, oh yes, that, that this industry pays $100 billion in federal, state, and local taxes. So when I say follow the money, that is following the money. But then you say to me, Eric, wait. You say that it's big food, but there's tons of manufacturers. Just take a look at what's on the grocery store. There's, there's over 40,000 items on the grocery store shelves, 40,000. So competition is good, and I love competition. Yes, competition is good, but the reality is that just a handful of powerful companies control the majority market share, almost 80% of all the grocery items bought regularly by ordinary Americans. There was an article that was published last year by The Guardian. And The Guardian revealed that the majority of the food that we buy is, is honestly, and that, that, that consumer choice is merely an illusion, despite shelves, refrigerators, and the grocery stores just brimming with different brands and different options. And this study showed that, in fact, a few powerful multinational companies big food companies dominate pretty much every link in the food chain from the seeds to the fertilizer to the slaughterhouse to the supermarkets to different categories chips cereal and my favorite beer yes indeed the consolidation runs very very deep in fact four firms this article goes on to say four firms or fewer control at least 50% of the market for 79% of the groceries we purchase. For almost a third of shopping items, the top firms control at least 75% market share. So, you heard me right. Four firms controlling a massive amount of what we eat. And here you go. Pepsi. Pepsi controls... 91% of the chip market. Uh, it owns popular brands, so Cedars, Lay's, Frito. 93% of the sodas we drink, three companies. You can guess them. And the same goes for cereal. 
of breakfast cereal goes to four companies. So it is it is true. And I encourage you, you know, check out the link to this article and you can roll over. It is a year dated, but it is mind blowing. Okay. Now to make matters worse, food companies are deliberately engineering our food and beverages to be addictive. They are loading them with sugar, with chemical flavorings, with artificial ingredients, fake sweeteners, and they're designed to do one thing, to get you to eat them and want more of them. And I know this because this is what I did for 25 years. I was in traditional food consumer packaged goods companies, marketing companies, okay? And uh, they were big food. By every definition of it, they were big food. And my scientists, all good people, by the way, my food scientists, they were instructed to create food that delivered the highest possible overall liking, overall liking score. These are sensory scores. And to do that at the least possible cost. And so here's how the equation works. The more sugar, the higher the overall liking. The more fat, the higher the overall liking. The more uh, salt, the higher the overall liking. The more umami, another fancy word for MSG, monosodium glutamate, savory, the higher the liking. So it was a pretty simple equation. And the higher the liking, the more you eat, the more you eat, the more you buy. That's the name of the game. Follow the money. There's a book, Mark Schatzer. He wrote The Dorito Effect. And in it, he showed how our approach to food is completely manipulated. And he basically tells the story of how over the, you know, since the 40s, how we've made incredible uh, technological advances in delivering flavor, artificial flavor. And we've chosen flavor over nutrition as we've changed our food supply. And it starts at the agricultural level. This has been happening since the 40s. Read the book. It's fascinating. But the problem is this invisible manipulation, even for seemingly healthy foods, they are becoming more like junk food, highly craveable and void of nutrition. So like usual, I ask the question, what are you to do? Number one, Recognize that you have choice. You have choice. Grow your own, for goodness sake. Harvest your own meat. Harvest your own plants, your own vegetables. Do that to the extent that you can and keep the nutrition in your food. Number two, choose nutrient density. Now, nutrient density is a measure of how many, how many, how many nutrients per calorie, how many nutrients per per gram, how many nutrients per food source. And if you like liver, if you like kale, you're, you know, you're, you're, well, you're well in hand because those are some of the most nutrient-dense foods out there. But if you don't, you can obviously choose nutrient survival. Top shelf, delicious, special ops grade nutrition. And you know the rest. Designed to the nutritional standards of the military for people like us. That's all I have for you today. Keep fighting the fight and keep on prepping.